Today, I'm going to walk you through how you can create the retro looking text like this right here using Adobe Spark Post. If you want to learn how, stick around and I'll show you. Hey everybody, what's going on? Claudio here and welcome to my channel where I share tips, tools and tricks to help you share your story. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to the channel. If you are a returning guest, thanks so much for stopping by once again. As I mentioned at the start, I'm going to walk you through how to create this really cool long shadow effect using Adobe Spark Post. This is probably one of the more challenging things I've done in Adobe Spark Post, but it is doable. You just need a little bit of patience, a little bit of time, but you'll be able to do this. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I went ahead and launched a project here and just chose a square size. You can choose any size you want. The next thing I'll do here is add some color in the backdrop. This is going to be my background color. You could always change it to any other color. Our next step is to add some text and I'm going to look for some retro looking text. I'm going to recreate this U rock kind of poster and let's go ahead and remove that shape of a background and let's change the font again. We want to choose something a little more retro looking. I have this one that I chose from Adobe fonts. If you have your own, you can always upload it. Just make sure you have the license. And in case you have the premium version of Adobe spark, you can add additional Adobe fonts. So I'm going to go with that one there and change the color to white. Just make it a little bit bigger here and kind of move it up here. Now our next step is to create those layers or I should say those uh, shadows behind the text. Now I'm going to start with the letter K and to do that, I'm going to choose the icon and I've got rectangle selected here or I typed in rectangle. I'm going to click on rectangle and add this here. And now what I'll do is rotate this about there, maybe 45 degree or close to that. And what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and just make this a lot bigger. We want that to kind of, uh, kind of bleed out of the edge there. And I'm going to use my arrow keys to kind of fine tune the placement here. So I'm kind of close to where I want it to be. Now I want to, Let's see, again, it'll be about right there. And now what I'll do is click on duplicate. Uh, before I do that, let me change this color here. Actually, orange is not too bad, but let's kind of go with the blue here. Well, let's go with that one there. And uh, I'll hit duplicate up here. And now what I'll do is add this over here to this edge of the letter K. And then I'm going to kind of click on duplicate again. So basically what I'm doing is rip replicating this shape several times so that I can kind of fine tune it. And uh, then I'll kind of go to the edge up here, trying to get that little edge up there by that on the letter K. There we go. That's close. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it once again to kind of fill the space out. And so you can see, it's gonna take a little bit of time again, and as I mentioned, some patience. So I've got that one kind of set where I want it to be. Now I'm going to click on the letter, say the word rock, and reorder that, bring it to the front, just so you kind of see how it looks like right there. I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Now what I'll do is I'll grab another one of these um, rectangles and duplicate again. We're gonna move that out over here. Let's go ahead and change the color for, let's go with red. And now we're gonna do this to the letter C. Now you see what happens when I move the red, it's going behind it. So all I need to do is click on this. Let me click out and click in. And we're going to reorder that so that it's in front. There we go. So now we'll kind of repeat the process here. Get it kind of close enough. Let's resize this somewhat we don't want it to be seen on that other side and we're pretty close there and again duplicate the red rectangle we're going to move it right about there using the arrow keys on my keyboard kind of fine tune it that's pretty good and then what we'll do is we'll replicate it once again 
and then we'll use kind of fill out those empty spots duplicate once again and we'll kind of do the edge of the letter C there and you can see there's a little bit of, of a gap here so let's resize that so you can see now again repeat the process duplicate and we'll do to the letter O but this time let's change the color of that let's go with let's go with go with a green let's use this green and again we're going to reorder that rectangle oh. we do this here oh, we're going to bring it up one more layer there we go and again so now with the letter o it's kind of we actually can kind of do this right here uh, pretty, we can pretty much get it done with just one and then duplicate it once again resize it a little bit a little bit of that shadow right there we might need to bring that one in just a bit here just a tiny bit tad bit there replicate again and we'll duplicate once more we want this edge up here all right we're kind of getting there i think we're getting there we might need to just adjust that just a tad bit here there we go and then we're left with the letter R. Duplicate once again. Let's reorder that. And let's change the color. Let's go with a yellow this time. There we go. So we're going to do that with the letter R now. Resize it. Use the arrow keys. Let's get that to the edge right there. So this one's pretty much we could pretty much just do this right here duplicate it once again resize it we'll duplicate once again i'm going to fill this spot out right here and then we'll duplicate it once again because we want to get that opening of that letter r and this one's going to just be a little bit of fine tuning with the keys and we're pretty much set right there cool now we're going to wrap this up and add the word u there and click on done and then kind of add this on top and there we go we have u rock with the different colored shadows there now the other way we can do this is creating kind of more detailed shadows. Now this example here took a little bit longer to create. So you'll need to be a little bit more patient when you're working on this. So I'll kind of do a little reverse engineer here. Let me move the word rock there out of the way and just kind of show you. Basically it's the same process as I showed you before. The only difference is you're creating multiple shadow, darker shadows and lighter shadows and just placing them in different places. So as you can see here, this basically, again, the same process. Now, one thing to be aware of when you're working on this is the order of the rectangles. So this, let me show you what I mean here. Let me move the word rock back over here. And we're going to kind of, let's see here. Let's take this shadow here. So if you can see, if I move it out of the way, so basically, let's see. And move that so as you can see they're basically rectangles different sizes and again it's really fine tuning but you're basically having to work with layering used by or using that order slider so let me click undo kind of bring it back there we go so just be a little more patient when you're working on this piece here, but it's basically the same steps as I showed you with the previous example. I hope this video was helpful, something that you can use to go and create your own long shadow text effect with Adobe Spark Post. Let me know what you thought about this video by adding it in the comment section below. If you have any questions, feel free to add it there. If you have any other ways to do this too, please let me know. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell to be notified for future videos. 
then thank you once again for watching this video. And as always, be good to one another. Until next time, peace. I'm out.